As humans, we are almost in a state of shock as we age, almost like it's happening too fast. The aging process, we are told, is part of the journey. We consider living into our 80s or 90s as living a long time, but think about it. Why are we aging? And more importantly, is aging a disease brought on by our presence here on Earth? It is something to ponder over. Why do we get sick, contract diseases, and die, sometimes prematurely? It is a condition of the Earth acting against something that shouldn't be there. Wait till you hear this. Here's an interesting thought. Before we were acquainted with habitation on the Earth, it is possible that such an outline of survival was drawn up for us to follow. Like soldiers going into a guerrilla war, where we as humans told that we need to exercise on the Earth. We would need to either hunt food and create our own versions of food, and we would need to use the Earth's resources to clothe ourselves. These things are anomalous because it shows that we are not a species in a natural environment. We are constantly battling unseen forces that are constantly attacking our nervous system. If we had evolved here, then we would be used to these things by now, yet we are seemingly creating a world to reflect something else, something that did not exist before human intervention. Things like eternal light yoga invoke ancient yoga practices including movement, breathing techniques, and meditation to provide you with practical solutions to modern day challenges so you can do more of what you love. We say this is an ancient practice that calls on your inner spirit for clarity and guidance, yet something deep exists within these practices that tell us there is more. Imagine feeling inspired to live your life with more clarity confidence, physical and mental health, and a deep sense of inner peace. The possibilities are endless, so why are we not all doing it, you have to wonder. The teachings of such things like yoga will tell you that this is our true nature. What an odd thing to say. Why would we need to be shown our true nature and what is preventing us from acting like our true selves without the use of such disciplines? Inner illuminations is the realizations of the pineal. The sudden understanding that our bodies are nothing but a capsule, and not only that, but we can train ourselves to leave our bodies for the purposes of exploring different realms from that of the Earth. This phenomenon is told to us throughout our lives, but we mostly always keep the door closed on the expectations to realize this. A wise person once said that all the misery in the world comes from people wanting happiness. We are all like tourists on this planet. We almost have a sense of entitlement towards certain things like happiness without the knowledge of how to obtain such an emotion. In this sense, we are emotional tourists who have realized very little with the exception of not knowing. And therein lies the path to enlightenment. To achieve such things, we must realize that not knowing is something we have to admit too. We shouldn't be afraid to admit that we simply don't know things like who we are and what the hell it is we are supposed to be doing here on this planet. If we are to begin to open our minds and listen, then we will begin to hear the answers. They are probably closer than we realize, but we need to remember that only when we begin can we start to begin. We have searched the entire planet for secrets and cures to our short time on the earth, but nothing has been found to further our life or enhance our understanding. The Akashic Record is probably as close as we have come to finding anything. What is the Akashic? Well, get this. If we come from somewhere else in the vastness, then perhaps the Akashic Record is a memory of these things that we left behind. And with access to this realm, we can replicate on this planet with the resources available. The things that we once knew, in this sense, we are developing this planet into our new home to look like our old home and advancing the technologies as they once were. One important point is that to equate ending aging with immortality is not entirely correct because curing aging simply means that you will not die through becoming old, but does not preclude that you could be knocked over crossing the street, get attacked by a shark, be involved in some sort of accident or suffer a fate which potentially could kill someone now even if they were only 22 or 23 years old. 
Eliminating aging simply means that a person, for example, of 70, would potentially have the biological health of a 30-year-old. So their risk of dying from disease would be massively reduced, but it does not preclude any of the other causes of death. If we exclude aging as a cause of death, it will be quite realistic that we would live to around 700 years on average, or until we succumb to some sort of event which killed us. And of course, these timelines are documented in the ancient records and religious texts, leading us to speculate that perhaps the stories in the holy record are in fact stories from another world. Maybe, just maybe, we arrived on the earth on Noah's Ark and began to work the earth for the survival and eventual prosperity of our kind. Early alchemy, for example, was essential to our development in the very remote past, and this study led to the creation of medicines, chemical formulas, and physics. But who were these alchemists? Would it surprise you to learn that early alchemy involved the study to cure human aging? It is basically the study of adapting the human to this planet, guys. It's crazy. If you can turn lead into gold, then there must be a way of curing diseases in humans, right? Transmutation to lead into gold isn't just theoretically possible, it has been achieved. There are reports that Glenn Seaborg, 1951 Nobel Laureate in Chemistry, succeeded in transmuting a minute quantity of lead into gold. In nature, new elements are created by adding protons and neurons to hydrogen atoms within the nucleus of a star, producing increasingly heavier elements up to iron. Elements heavier than iron are formed in the stellar explosion of a supernova. In a supernova, gold may be transformed into lead, but not the other way around. While it may never be commonplace to transmute lead into gold, it is practical to obtain gold from lead ores. The minerals galena, cerasite, and anglesite often contain zinc, gold, silver, and other metals. Once the ore has been pulverized, chemical techniques are sufficient to separate the gold from the lead. The result alchemy, and in the early days of understanding, these people were convinced of the philosopher's stone that could rejuvenate the human body after birth to live our intended age of many hundreds of years by deriving the elixir of life from such a thing. The same term, more fully elixir vita, elixir of life, was given to the substance that would prolong our life. A liquid was believed to be allied with the philosopher's stone. Chinese Taoists not only sought the pill of immortality, but developed techniques such as meditation and breathing exercises that were thought to confer immortality by internal alchemy. Anyway guys, you have listened to our rambling long enough today, and for that we thank you. You can let us know what you are thinking, comments below, and as always, thank you for watching.